Hello, welcome to video 11. In the last video, I talked about GWNP, Gigawatt Nameplate. In this video, I'm going to talk more about GWYR, Gigawatt Year. These are important concepts. If you haven't yet, please watch the first Gigawatt Down video that I did four years ago, which the experts have yet to catch on to. But hopefully this campaign will wake people up. You may think I'm strange babbling about these things. And I am. But I feel we should all join in this strangeness and enter a whole new world. What's the big deal here? If we don't anchor the units, the rest of the climate solution conversation is pretty useless. All those people out there babbling about solutions with no anchor All those people out there babbling about solutions with no anchor, no accountability, no shared understanding of the basic units. Yeah, what kind of a solution are they going to negotiate? Think about electricity as currency. And currency is money, right? Money is currency. You actually use the word currency for both money and electricity. This is not an accident. So just if you will imagine for a while how important both the units of the currency for both money and electricity are, and also the feeling of the power, like what it really means. It's not just an abstract number, right? It's not just monopoly money. It's not just like some number on a like, hey, don't touch that voltage. It's very important to have a shared understanding of the value of number. So with like money currency, for example, Say you are in another country and you're used to the dollar, but you're in this other country and you, like you're in Iceland, and they're like, hey, here's a sandwich and it's 20,000 Icelandic kroner. Do you think, what a great deal? I'm so happy, I'll, I'll eat for weeks. What do you think? Or say you're in America and then you've got your car on Craigslist that you're trying to sell and then some dude shows up from Japan and he's like, hey, I've got 20,000 yen cash for that car. Should you take the cash? Is it a deal? Are you being ripped off? Do you have any idea? Okay, so the way money works is that we all have like a sense of the numbers, the abstract, like this number is higher than that number, or there's twice as much, so that there's an accountability dimension to it. But there's also a visceral understanding, right? In a negotiation, you've got money and everybody's using this, this, these numbers, and they connect that with what it really takes to deliver on that number, right? You know how many hours you had to work, right? So this number of money is translated into time and effort and unpleasantness or, or pleasantness. So you have a real connection to those numbers. Most of us understand money, it's not just monopoly money, or we can tell the difference between monopoly money where it's just an abstraction and real money that you had to work for that you're really gonna have to pay off. Uh, and it's, it's about the effort that you had to put into it, like the money measures that. It's a unit of accounting between people to value their work to each other. Now, obviously our whole economy is off the rails. That's a different conversation. Now, we, we want to apply the same kind of grounded feeling to these energy units that you get with money. When you're working with an unfamiliar currency, okay, you're gonna have to make some calculations. You know, like do an exchange rate, well, was that yen? I have to do some math. Now this is okay if you're traveling to a foreign country, you kind of expect, I'm gonna have to do some math with the currency. But if you're in your own country, you expect that people will use a currency that everybody kind of understands so that you can focus on, well, how much is this gonna cost me in terms of my time and effort? Like you really get a sense of that number and how it's anchored to your life decisions. And we really do need to get a sense of these energy units, not as some abstract monopoly money kind of level, but as on the real level, because we are embarking on an epic 
uh, culture, society, economy-wide negotiation of, of, you know, that's going to transform the whole landscape and everything, right? So it's some pretty epic stuff, and we need to know what that stuff is. Okay, so that graph I showed in the last video, it's from the um, Deep Pathways book. Okay, so let's take a look at that graph now. Uh, over here you see it's got gigawatt. Um, it should really be gigawatt nameplate or GWC, right? But anyway, gigawatt. And the gigawatt are in increments of 500, right? 500, 1,000, all the way up to 4,000. 4,000 gigawatt. And most of them are around like two, 3,000. So then in the graph right above it, you've got similar information, except it's e electricity generation, not capacity, actual generation. And it's in EJ. So like I said in the last video, uh, electricity capacity, generation capacity is different from actual generation. Uh, and so it shows it here. You've got the one graph and the other. But you can express both with a GW in there somewhere. Gigawatt capacity, GW. GW by itself usually means capacity, but I think you need to distinguish it by gigawatt nameplate, gigawatt capacity. Like put something there to make sure everybody is aware that you're talking about gigawatt capacity, right? And then the deliverable would be gigawatt year delivered. That's a unit, people use it, it's acceptable. However, here they're using EJ. What does EJ stand for? Ecojustice? No. Ecojustice? No. It stands for exajoules. Exajoules. Energy experts like to use exajoules. Which, yay, fun for experts, I'm so happy for you. Uh, just the problem is the rest of us civilians think that that's like some kind of monopoly money. You're like, oh, exajoules, whatever. So you guys are happy talking to each other. And meanwhile, the rest of us are out here clueless. Okay, so what the rest of us are used to though, what we might get in our um, energy bill is like kilowatt hours for the electricity and therms for the gas. So can we do something, can we, can we build on that? Can we just like get a bridge going from the kilowatt hours and therms that we see in our bills all the way up to those big energy units uh, that you guys are using? You know, lo and behold, we can, but not with exajoules. Maybe with gigawatt years, terawatt hours, kilowatt hours, gigawatt years, megawatt years. Those things, they all are along a nice continuum. Let's work with that. I don't know why this is like so self-evident to me and what is like blocking these experts from seeing it and just everybody. This is so obvious. Like you have a bunch of people and they need to have a unit that they can work together and negotiate because otherwise you don't know what deal people are making. Like look at this graph. Like what are we supposed to do? Just pick up one of these out of this lineup? This is meaningless. It's like monopoly money. It's some abstract game. But if you break it down into units, and then we rebuild from those units. Just one real simple number that'd be easy for me to remember. Very important to get a unit, like a chunk, that we can all begin to build around, like a little basic building block that we can all start to see as we build our plans. And what we need to do is really see what we get for one gigawatt year. Like that's, that's our currency. So when, when we spend, when we, when we demand, like we want one gigawatt year of energy so we can do what in our lives and how many of us can do what. So if we get a, a and not like, oh, it's like taking 20,000 cars off the road or whatever, those things, but like comprehensively, how many human beings can have a fully electrified life with one gigawatt year, right? We're on this side of the plug and we wanna know, we wanna know we're on this side of the plug and we got, we're getting one gigawatt year out on this side of the plug. What are we getting for that? So that we get the value of one gigawatt year delivered electricity. What is that? And then on the other side of the plug, what does it take to deliver what we're getting on this side, right? So on this side, we want to know what we're getting for one gigawatt year that we can always instantly see. And then on the other side, well, if depending on what energy type we use, uh, what is that going to cost us? Like, what, what's the trade-off? What, and it's different based on the energy supply, as you know, if you've watched my other video. But if we can clear that up in, in chunks of one gigawatt year, 
you know, what's, what's on the other side of this plug? What's on this side of the plug? What do we get for one gigawatt year? What does it take to get, give us one gigawatt year? So experts, you need to break it down for all of us. We're all on this side of the plug. We're hanging out on this side. We're still not even sure what these units are on this side. So step one, you know, what does the demand side look like? What do you get for one gigawatt year of delivered energy? And then like, how many do you need for your whole state? You need 20, right? And then your whole state is satisfied. You got 20 gigawatt years. New Jersey, way to go. Okay, and then what is it going to take to deliver that? And stick to one unit, one gigawatt year one gigawatt year at a time until all our energy needs are satisfied with best practices on both sides of the plug. That's the equation we have to solve together in a massive negotiation. So don't annoy us with units that just have extra calculation work. One gigawatt year. shouldn't be called experts, they should be called exajoule spurters. Exajoule spurter 